subsidies for their uh, for the local businesses to adopt AI. So it's in work in progress. Two perspectives to just to lead on to what Roshan said. Right? Uh, there tends to be an over focus on AI in the Institute of Higher Learning segment. Right? Uh, AI needs to also you know be embedded into the high schools, right, and even in primary schools, where we start the AI concept with kids, right, how AI can improve your day-to-day -day learning, how AI assists you in learning, how AI gets you to complete tasks in a faster manner. So that ethos needs to be driven down, right, uh, not necessarily in the Institute of Higher Learning, but generally at the primary school level and all the way to the secondary school level. So, yeah, you're wrong. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, if I may add as well. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, so if I may add as well in terms of the cybersecurity awareness, right? So, uh, no matter how secure our defense, our cybersecurity posture is, there's always what we call the weakest link, right? Irregardless, whatever system. And in the cybersecurity space, sad to say, the, you, uh, the, the weakest link is us, is the human. And that's why cybersecurity awareness is very much important, especially for our employees, for those that are non techies So I guess you may have heard of the deep things that are coming in, the vishing, you may have heard of the uh, particular bank that was hacked by just vishing or by using deep things. And uh, I think uh, from a Philippine perspective, uh, our fintech companies are all also aggressive in pushing. You know, if you wanted to validate and check, if the ones that you see on your video, on your messenger, you have to really call them up, not just using those uh, messengers, whatever, right? You have to revalidate, double check, and making sure that the one that you're talking to is the real person behind those things. Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead, Rob. Uh, go ahead. Uh, so, oh, hi. Oh, sorry. There. Let me get this. Okay. Uh, there, there has been talks about uh, regulating AI, and I want to hear from each of the panelists, what is your take? Uh, should the government of the Philippines regulate AI? And if you don't or do agree, what will be the best alternative or the best way for, for it to be uh, established locally? A, a, tough, a tough question, yes. <laughs> uh, anyone, anyone from the, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at least uh, personally and also as a company, uh, Dell, we believe in AI regulation, right? So uh, it's like telling that uh, and it's not only within a country, but also across countries, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like the, like, a, like the whole nuclear program. Today, someone who has AI capabilities has actually invented the next atomic bomb, right? It's compared to that. So regulation has to be there. The other thing is from a business perspective, just if you look at enterprises, if you don't have regulation, everyone will build their own, um, you know, AI. Let's say just everyone's creating a chatbot. And, uh, you know, if my chatbot, I'm a bank, I'm a chatbot, and you ask a question, you're the customer, and what if my chatbot scolds you with, you know, foul language or does some discrimination? So if there's no regulation, you can't take me to court. And here, you know, we, we, we have to seek customer loyalty, we have to seek customer, customers first. So regulation is important even at the nationwide and at, at you know, individual country and corporation wide. Yeah. How about the rest? <coughs> totally <thing>? agree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's, 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 it's very important now, especially with the upcoming election. Yeah. yeah, there has to be regulation. Yes, I mean, we, we have it in Europe now, so I think it was released in, in uh, August. Um, it was fairly fairly quick uh, to come to pass. Um, you know, the, we, we talked about threats earlier, uh, and we were talking really about external threats, right? Um, people using um, AI-generated threats, but some of the threats can also come from within the organisation and how we use AI. And I think that's where regulation is really important, so that when we are we're building AI models and we're setting our own company um, acceptable use policies, 
that we need that we need to abide by some kind of regulation. We need some guidelines, right? We need some swim lines. Um, and there was there was some certain high profile uh, cases uh, in the UK and in Europe where AI was misused. And uh, that's right. You know, without regulation, um, if a company or individuals uh, face some kind of loss, um, it's very difficult to take that to court. And uh, that's that's been a, definitely a sore point, right? So AI can be used in malicious ways um, that affect people's lives or company assets. So we do need regulation. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to uh, protect our protect our people and also our assets. Yeah. Ron, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if I may add as well, in terms of the AI regulation, you know, as what Uncle Ben had mentioned, great uh, power comes with great responsibility. So I think we all know that, right? And for AI, this is something uh, I would say it, it, it's a massive adoption, right? It was if you take a look at it, AI was just like used way back uh, last year, kind of mistake. 2023. Right now, the option is so massive. It actually beats the adoption of the internet in the late 1990s and as per statistics. Now. So I, I think the AI is there, the adoption is there, but I think uh, for us to be able to harness the power of AI, it should come with regulations. And as what my friend Simon had mentioned, we need to make sure that ethics, the business risk, and I think if these are not regulated, this will be a big impact for us because AI has a huge potential. When it went to the wrong hands, it, if it's used, misused properly, you know, I mean, we don't know what happens next. I mean, just me. Ram? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. All right, uh, slightly, slightly dissenting opinion on this, all right? So I'm, I'm a big, big believer on, on free enterprise, okay? Because, you know, they try to regulate Facebook and Google for the longest time, okay? I think Bob's question is from the government perspective regulating, right? So it, uh, if it is in the use of uh, perpetrating a crime, then yes. But I am more inclined for self-regulation, meaning the industry trying to regulate itself, okay? Rather than having um, a strict clause because you will tamper uh, uh, creativity and progress, okay? Of course, there's the danger of it. So uh, if we can balance it in terms of uh, having the industry regulate itself rather than having a strong arm from the government regulate. But do we have a governing body you know, that's in charge of uh, making sure that these processes are, are strictly followed? Do we have it in the Philippines? Is there a governing body? Um, I, for think other, I think in other countries um, yeah. have not, yeah, because I read the piece yeah. where in other countries they really have this governing body where they are able to assess and ensure that all these processes are strictly followed, but I don't think we have it in the Philippines. Let's yeah. make it more difficult. But we must also realize AI adoptions, you know, while it's a big growth, the governance around AI is in infancy. Right? There will be many trials and errors, right? and I tend to agree uh, that over-regulating it right, is going to defeat the purpose. Right? But we need to put some guardrails, but the guardrails cannot be permanent. Right, It's constantly evolving because AI is an evolving technology. right? So with the laws and regulations around AI, we've got to constantly monitor, evaluate, and make augmented changes as part of the regulation. I think that would probably be a sound adoption. Ram, please, let's proceed with um, Next question. Okay, so I want to ask. Uh, I I just like to take a step back uh, from where we are heading with AI. That topic. Um, businesses are in varying stages in AI adoption and maturity. So for businesses who are in the early stages, uh, they might be curious as to how each of your organizations built AI literacy to ensure a resilient ecosystem. What approach did you implement and how did they differ across the strategic layer with your executive leadership and governance teams, your application layer with mid-level managers and business practitioners, your execution 
or technical te uh, technical teams and your support layers, which is your foundational teams. How did they differ? Um, what were your practices? So they can um, so you can provide a model for them. Can I ask for a repeat of the question? Ah. It's pretty long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sir, uh, sir, yes. for, um, for AI literacy, um, how did you build it across um, your, uh, your strategic layer, application layer, uh, execution, and support layers? So, okay. And how did they differ? Okay. Actually, um, for example, in our organization, right, it's a global approach. Right? We do have a global approach to things. So the benefit of that is it's uh, whatever was implemented well in the other countries, right, we, we can definitely adopt it from a trickle-down perspective. Um, our perspective of AI education is that um, obviously you take a look at it from a strategic layer, okay, and then of course take a look at it from uh, a customer-centric layer, right? Because we are definitely our, our lifeblood is the customer, right? So we uh, get what what we think is the customer's perspective on it, right? And then we educate based on that. Um, I think that's the most effective uh, way of, of, uh, of seeing things. Um, definitely all strategy follows what the customer really wants to go into. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, actually, my key takeaway from all the talks is that to better implement AI, we have to have the right AI infrastructure. And currently, Gartner's AI hype cycle is on AI engineering. So my question is, um, how do you future-proof your infrastructure so organizations can keep up with the with that hype cycle without incurring additional costs? Yeah, it's my, a big, big, a big challenge. Yeah, yeah, Actually, my, my response to that, to that is proper planning. Right? Um, to be able to go into this AI project, or whatever project it is, right? It, 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 should, it should come from a proper planning perspective. Um, the most important thing there is to establish what is your goal. Right? If you have this goal, uh, definitely everything can, can easily align to that. Okay. Yeah. But uh, from an HP perspective in terms of infrastructure in, in investments, right? as I've told uh, people er, uh, the, 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 the panel earlier, we have to get our data in order. Right? We have to really drive to get that data in order, because um, however strategy you want to, to go into AI is really being driven by proper data structures, right? proper data management, and so on. From a business protection perspective, uh, from an investment protection perspective, another thing is, of course, uh, take a look at how you can harness AI to, to be able to have resiliency, right, in your in your business process, resiliency in your operations. Um, I think th th that's where you where we can really harness um, the investment pro properly. Yeah, thank you. Ram, go ahead. You have a question, Ram. Okay, okay. Mark. Just uh, regarding doing business here in the Philippines. Uh, how do you differentiate your approach to the Philippine market versus other ASEAN countries, especially uh, in terms of uh, when you consider our regulations as well as our infrastructure in tech, and finally our AI readiness? Do you encounter any challenges that you wish uh, perhaps that the government could help you on? I, I think anyone can, can answer that. Yeah, so, um, you know, we have in Dell, we are pleasantly surprised. Even mature markets for us like Singapore, uh, you know, Australia, Japan, they are still very conscious when they are adapting certain technology, right? Here, at least the will is there. Um, like, for example, we have sold our first lake house product across APJ and China. The first is in Manila, right? Because you know, that customer understood the need to do data management before doing AI, right? And they, and they jumped from, they were just trying to transform their uh, existing data warehouse 
we went and spoke to them and told them why you know warehouse is a dying thing you need to go to a lake house and then they built it right and this is what happens and then you know i have you you know complex use cases in for example in cambodia right in a uh, uh, lot of emerging markets so i'm not calling philippines as an emerging market you're still uh, you know you're, you're much more than an emerging market but then um, if you go and we talk to the users here and and uh, they are they are willing to experiment right but here on the other flip side is the large banks the large telcos are still very traditional <laughs> it's difficult to actually get them to move but there are there are some uh, other traditional businesses which are very quick and they are you know so both these things uh, we see over here and um, um, also at you know from last year what i'm seeing personally in the market the the willingness to learn and try out new things right i'm seeing that improve so in the market so that's uh, that's very good so prashant can you disclose which company uh, <laughs> uh, i think client i'll see you at the bar right <laughs> 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 yeah go ahead then yeah cisco just announced uh, the other day or was it yesterday that the the AI readiness survey uh, which actually showed that um, the readiness of companies here in the Philippines actually came down from 22% from last year to just I think uh, 17% so despite the hi the hype about the potential impact of um, of uh, AI to businesses and other industries uh, there seems to be a diminish uh, enthusiasm so to speak about uh, deploying uh, AI. Can, can I just get a, a, a reaction on that? I, th I think it's probably uh, just lack of clarity around the risks that AI may bring. I, th I think it's not fully understood yet. Mm -hmm. I think we've still got a lot of education uh, to do. I think uh, lack of regulation as well, uh, lack of control, uh, ethics, you know, all of these things can impact uh, any kind of adoption really. So uh, maybe there are things that we need to, to focus on um, and maybe we'll see that, that adoption rate uh, climb again. Thank you. Yeah, if I may, I probably, uh, no, I haven't seen the Cisco presentation. Probably my gut feel is that uh, there was a big question, uh, I mean, during those presentation is that will AI replace my job? I think everybody gets that fear, right? So if AI is being implemented in any of the company, will I be secure? Will my job be still there? So that's why even if how much we push AI from that perspective, so if those people that are below, let's say, the management level, they don't want to adopt it, chances are, of course, if your job is at stake, if your life is at stake, you know, the ones that you're earning is at stake. I mean, that's a big question. I mean, me, if, if I'm working on the working level, if my job gets in place, you know, I will be, I'll be pushing back with this kind of technology. I mean, from that perspective, no. So I think from, from us, it's all about educating the companies or the, the later or the, the companies out there on what is, the benefit that could go out of this AI. And I think at the end of the day, on any company, it's all about the business objective, you know. At the end of the day, regardless of what technology, what you adopt, it's all about the outcome. It's all about the results, it's all about the business objective. And that's why probably, if my job's at stake, probably you could actually tell to the guys that, hey, you may get promoted, you may get to a different role rather than you staying like there for that particular job. You might get some different roles, right? And I think probably uh, if I'm a owner of a company or if I'm a president of the company, if we're going to adopt AI, we have to ensure at least if there are jobs at stake, perhaps we can find some jobs for them at the end of the day. That would be, uh, I would say, more enticing rather than routine tasks, probably elevate their positions. Because on that perspective, you know, it's you know, it's all about mindset. It's all about the safetyness coming from those employees. Because you know, at the end of the day, if this has not been properly communicated, this has not been.
properly, you know, uh, communicated to the to the people around to the employees, there will be a lot of pushbacks. I mean, that's just my observation. No? Because I, I was able to talk to one customer because uh, there was this uh, uh, AI, uh, you know, AI adoption. But from the age group, they're trying to push back. You know, they're trying to push back my age group. They don't want to adopt AI. Probably they may not be. They were not able to educate what AI is, what's the benefit out of there, because I think it's all about the board discussion at the end of the day. To help uh, communicate properly, if we're going to AI, there should be a proper communication. What's the objective and at the end of the day, what's the results for the betterment of the company at the end of the day? Thank you. Yes, sir. I think the complexities are sinking in. Remember those days when almost all companies are rushing to Oh, mag ERP tayo, di ba? ERP implementation, or digital IT transformation, and then they find out that it's not that easy. That you will, you know, uh, see statistics that that uh, six out of ten ERP projects are failing. So I think it's the same thing because, as uh, my colleagues have said, the AI uh, is in the infancy stage. Eh? Nobody really gets it. Uh, how do we do an AI strategy? As Jobert said, how do we benefit it all? Are we doing a um, benefit realization? Are we, are we getting what we're supposed to get uh, from the AI? So uh, when the complexity uh, sets in, and then you know, probably the interests are going down. All right. I'm sorry. Apologies. I have to close the uh, the VIP thing because we have another uh, Bob will be, will be uh, our speaker in the panel uh, presentation. But perhaps we can uh, arrange um, exclusive inter interviews yeah. to further.